Hello and welcome. In this video, I would like to introduce you to urban resource flows and urban metabolism. This is the pulse of your city. I would like you to close your eyes and imagine the natural resources that power the heartbeat of the city. You got it? Did you imagine water, energy, food or the products you consume every day? And every time you hear the heart of a city beat, you convert water into wastewater that is enriched with nutrients, but also bacteria. Every time you hear the heart of the city beat, the energy is generated and CO2 and other off gases are produced. Every time you hear the heart of the city beat, food is consumed, partly ends up in sewage, but also becomes food waste. And every time you hear the heart of the city beat, the products you use are thrown away, landfilled or incinerated. How can this diverse and complex urban metabolism, as it's sometimes called, be conceptualized and represented easily? One way to do this is a Sankey diagram. A Sankey diagram is nothing else than a mass flow balance. This type of diagram has a number of key features. It has a defined system boundary, in this case, your city. It has input and output flows, and it has stocks that accumulate in the city. Stocks accumulate when input exceeds output flows. The other important aspect of this diagram is that the width of the arrows represents the relative weight of the flows going into a city. Therefore, the width of an arrow enables us to compare different flows. More detailed versions of a Sankey diagram enable you to identify critical system properties, or in other words, critical metabolism properties of your city. For instance, you can identify the processes that are of key importance to target innovation and change. These are the processes that link and concentrate many different flows, shown over here. Or you can look at the processes that have a high output flow or system losses. These could be the processes that are crucial to address first. But let us go back to the Sankey diagram of the city. As you can see from the diagram shown here, our city is very resource hungry, you may say. Especially water dominates the overall resource inputs. But the other important resources I mentioned earlier are also shown here. You can also see that the output side of the diagram is dominated by wastewater but also that solid wastes, off-gases and consumer products are represented there. Now, this is a very linear approach and conceptualization of a city. But a new way of thinking and an ambition for the future is the circular urban metabolism, where things are as much as possible reused and recycled, as shown here in the recycling arrows. And as you can also see, as a result of these inputs and outputs are reduced. How can such a metabolism be achieved? Well, you could say there are four strategies to do so. Firstly, of course, to reduce consumption of water, energy and other resources. Secondly, multi-sourcing or finding alternative resources for the products we consume every day. Water is a very easy example here. You can use rainwater harvesting from your roof and use it for watering uh, for water in your house. This is practiced widely around the world. The third method is cascading or reusing the products at the quality that exit your household. So you could, for instance, think about reusing water for irrigation. The fourth and final strategy requires much more inputs and technology. That is recovery. Here you need energy, possibly chemicals or other things to upgrade the quality of a product and reuse it again. For instance, plastics can be re reused over and over again as well as metals. Using this approach, you on the one hand reduce our naturally, uh, natural resource consumption, as you can see here, shown in the smaller arrows. But on the other hand, you are also likely to reduce the environmental impact uh, your resource consumption has. So, I challenge you 
to start changing the metabolism of your home by using these strategies.